Welcome back to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach when working with clients. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, registered dietitian and founder, of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm also the author of The Healthy Kids Cookbook, 100% kid-approved recipes the entire family will love. I wrote that with my two stepkids, Brody and Cooper, and it's available on Amazon. In this podcast, we will be teaching you how to take one step at a time to becoming the healthiest version of yourself. Today, Ashley and I are talking all about the top three nutrition myths that we get asked about often. There's so much misinformation on the internet about nutrition and diets. It's tough to know what's right and what isn't. Well, today you are in luck. In this episode, we discuss cutting specific macronutrients like fat and carbohydrates. We discuss understanding health food claims at first glance that might look seemingly healthy. And the last one that we talk about is severely restricting your calories and what it could do to damage your metabolism. Well, one of these myths is really diving into food labeling and marketing. And one of the things that we discuss is understanding how to read a nutrition facts label and understand how to cut through the noise with marketing claims around food. To go along with this episode, click the link in the show notes and download the beginner's guide. This will be a really big help for you. We will get to this episode right after this message. Do you know someone who's looking to become a healthier version of themselves? Are you? We would love for you to share this podcast with them. You never know who could use some words of encouragement. Take a screenshot, post it on social, and tag at Healthy Steps Nutrition so your friends can find this awesome free help. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another episode. Enjoy this episode on Nutrition Myths with Ashley Osterman and myself. Ashley, welcome back to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. Hi, Nicole. Thanks for having me. Today, we are talking about the top three nutrition myths. And honestly, it was tough for us to pick just three. There's so many out there. Yeah, unfortunately, there are so many nutrition myths, but we're going to bust these top three for you guys today. The food and beverage industry is a $14 billion industry in advertising. So there's a lot of money spent telling people that, you know, eat this food. Yes. You know, more than 80% of this advertising promotes fast food, sugar sweetened beverages, candy, and highly processed unhealthy snacks. And that $14 billion a year that's spent on advertising in the United States completely dwarfs the $1 billion budget for all chronic disease prevention and health prevention in the U.S. So let's just talk. I mean, it's understandable why there's confusion, right? Of course. Understandable marketing companies, food and beverage companies do a really good job making us think that foods are healthy. So let's just dive in with these myths. The first one is that insert X macronutrient is bad. Oh my gosh. And I remember as a kid growing up a while, while back that the first thing I heard was fat is bad for you, right? Everyone was on a low fat, fat fat-free type of diet. And, you know, we were thought and told that this was healthy. Like, Like, just get rid of fat and you'll be good. You'll lose the weight. You'll be healthy and look exactly like you want to. But that's not necessarily the truth. You know, fat is the most calorically dense macronutrient and a little bit goes a long way, but we need fat. We need fat because it's a component of our membranes. It aids in absorption of fat soluble vitamins, Mm -hmm. and it also keeps us full and can be used as a source of energy. So we want fat in our diet. And when we're limiting and going to fat free things, they're replacing that fat with something else, likely sugar as a stabilizer. Yes, because when you remove the fat, the palatability, the 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 taste kind of starts to go down. And so the marketing companies figured out that, hey, if we remove fat and we add sugar, people will still like this food product. Exactly. So there's lots of different sources of, flat, of fat. So we have plant sources of fat, animal sources of fat. And I think it's important for people to understand where are they getting their fat from? You know, a lot of our nutrition clients, if they're eating sausage and highly fatty red meats, it's going to 
cause them to maybe have too much fat for the day. So focusing on lean sources of meats, medium sources of of meats, medium fat sources of meats, and plant-based sources of fat is going to help us ensure that we're not getting too much, but we're also getting enough. Yeah. And when we talk about like healthy plant-based sources of fats, I'm talking about things like avocado, nuts and seeds, coconut, olive oil, those healthy fats that we would really like to get in our diet. And we know that there are some fattier meats that we should limit and have in moderation. But a good tip would be that if you are going to cook something that has a little more fat on it, like a meat, trim that fat off before you cook it. And, you know, also think about too, when we're having fat, like Nicole mentioned, it is very, very calorically dense. You know, it provides nine calories per gram um, compared to four calories per gram for other two macronutrients. So a little bit goes a long way. So think about that when you're adding your oil to the pan or oil to a dressing, things like that, not to overdo it with that fat. A lot of people don't even realize how much fat they're consuming for just pouring a bunch of oil. One of the <laughs> things that we love to use is those spritzers, yes. right? So it cuts down a little bit of the amount of fat, but fat slows down digestion. So it's actually going to keep you full longer if you have some fat in your meals. If we're just having protein and carbohydrates, it's going to break down a little bit faster and not keep us as full and satisfied for as long. So I hope this this first myth here about fat is bad. No, fat's not bad. We need fat in our diet. We want fat. It's just in moderation. The next macronutrient that I think has gotten the bad rap most recently, carbohydrates. Oh yeah. Carbohydrates is a huge umbrella. There are so many foods that fall under carbohydrates. And you know, we need carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are so important for us. They're our body's main source of fuel. And by consuming carbohydrates, it keeps protein from being broken down and used as energy. They also aid in the oxidation or the breakdown of fat, which is something we want to happen. Um, But when we talk about carbohydrates, I think there's two things to keep in mind here. We want carbohydrates that are going to be high high in fiber and lower in sugar. So really looking at the quality of the carbohydrates that you're eating. So recently the nutrition facts label now tells us how much added sugar is in food. So there are natural sources of sugar, Mm -hmm. right? Like fruit has natural sources of sugar. Dairy has natural Mm -hmm. sources of sugar. So those would be natural, but then there's a lot of food companies that add in extra sugar to make it taste even better. Right. Yep. Mm hmm. So it's important to look at the nutrition facts label to see, okay, how many total carbohydrates is in this food? What is the breakdown? Is it a high percentage of fiber? Fiber is a non-digestible carbohydrate. So it's going to slow down digestion, help keep us full a little bit longer. And um, we want to make sure that we are having foods that are, are higher in fiber and and lower in sugar. If foods are higher in sugar, then it's going to cause our blood sugar to go up, spike up, and then crash right back down. So we don't want to have foods that are super high in sugar. So when we say, you know, choose carbohydrates that are are low in sugar and high in fiber, we're saying when you're looking at your nutrition facts label, looking for a carbohydrate source that is less than four grams of sugar and more than three grams of fiber. So guys, choose those whole grains, those vegetables, those fruits, shop the perimeter of the store for those minimally processed carbs for you to load up in your diet. Absolutely. And the carbohydrates, those starchy carbs should be about one fourth of our plate for most people. And we also want to load up with those non-starchy vegetables. So that's going to be about half of our plate. That's going to give us a lot of fiber, vitamins, minerals that are going to help optimize our, our metabolism, help fill up our stomach with volume. No one wants to be hungry. (laughs) So we want to have those, those yummy vegetables that are loaded with, with vitamins and minerals and fiber. So I think the takeaway from our first myth, you know, insert food group is bad, is that incorporating a balance and variety of foods and macronutrients to meet your needs is what is going to be best for you. And keep in mind that balance looks different to everyone. And it's really based on your goals, your activity, and your medical history. Love that. All right, let's talk about number two. This one tricks everybody. Health claims, health labels, healthy labels. Yes. You know, I want to go back to something we were talking about at the beginning of this episode, you know, food marketing. You guys, these people have done their homework. They know to target 
children and teens in specific lower income communities for marketing of their least healthy products. And that's really unfortunate because they make these unhealthy products look healthy. They know what tricks to do. And when we're talking about the marketing to kids and teens, I think this is something that really makes people think because food marketing wants to target those younger clients because they know they have clients and consumers for life. $1.8 billion a year is spent on just marketing aimed towards children and teens. And of that $1.8 billion, 51% of that is marketing for sugar sweetened drinks, sugary cereals, sweets, and snacks. 40% is marketing for fast food and less than 1% is marketing for fruits and vegetables. Wow. So we are being tricked. (laughs) Our kids are being tricked. So it's important that we really understand what these health claims mean and can do a little bit of digging and research so that we're not tricked. Absolutely. And you know, food marketing will do specific things, especially when you're grocery shopping. They know where to place products, you know, at our eye level as adults to make us look at them and at the shopping cart seat level for the little ones to make them see them. They They know to make the packaging appealing and to seem healthy. And they use nutrient content claims to trick us. So let's go through some of those nutrient content claims. Yeah, I think- first one, high. Oh, goodness. I think this is one that definitely tricks people a lot. Just because a food says it's high in, does it necessarily equal healthy? When a food says high and has the nutrient content claim of high, it means it contains 20% or more of the daily value. So for example, you might see a child's yogurt that says high in protein. Okay, great. That might be a good option, high in protein. It just means it contains 20% or more of the daily value. But then we flip over the box of yogurt and you look at the ingredients and the first ingredient is sugar. So even though the product is high in protein, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to align with your health and wellness goals for you and your family. So we need to understand high, good source. So instead of 20%, it's 10 to 19% of the daily value. So we want to, if we see that, The next step would be turn it over and look at the nutrition facts label to see, all right, what is actually in this food? How is the macronutrient breakdown as far as protein, carbohydrates, and fats? How much sugar is in there? Is it going to actually help me stay full and satisfied or am I getting tricked? Yes. And you know, the sugar one is another one that can trick you, right? When you see something that says reduced sugar or less sugar on the product as the nutrient content claim... That does not necessarily mean that it's low sugar. Reduced or less sugar claim means that at least 25% less sugars in that product than the regular product. So if the regular product had 100 grams of sugar in it, the reduced or less sugar product has 75 grams of sugar in it. So not low sugar, not sugar free, just less than the original product. Same thing with low. Yes, same thing with with less or low, absolutely. And then no sugar added is another one that we see a lot. When it's no sugar added, that just means there's no sugar or sugar-containing ingredient added during the processing or packaging. But doesn't mean there's no sugar at all. There is just nothing added during that time. (laughs) Awesome. So it's important to understand those, those nutrition claims, but then we want to go to the ingredients list and actually look, remember the first ingredient is the most abundant. Second ingredient is the second most abundant, so on and so forth down the line to where the last ingredient listed is the least abundant in that food product. Now, I think a lot of people are tricked by foods that, that seemingly are healthy and sometimes they're not the best option. And I know I've personally been tricked by some of the different cauliflower pizzas, but then they have other sources of starch in there and carbohydrates. And it might actually be the same amount of carbohydrates in the cauliflower pizza than, than the regular thin crust pizza. 
Yep. And if you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to get this thing and it's going to be healthy, it's going to be um, a little bit more balanced, but you don't actually look at the back and the nutrition facts label. Hey, we've all been there. We've, we've all been there. All been tricked. So it, the main thing is just to understand and educate yourself with what are you looking for and how to read a nutrition facts label to understand, is this actually going to help me? get closer to my goals. And you know, for our listeners out there, one of the most tricky types of foods out there with the labels and looking seemingly healthy are those convenience breakfast items, especially for kids. I know I was recently tricked with oatmeal. Um, I grabbed one thinking it was the one I normally get. And I looked at the back when I got home, lots of sugar, but it had whole grain on the front or those pop tarts that say a good source of fiber, hundred percent whole grains and then the first ingredient is sugar. Um, another one is, you know, kids snacks. I know these can be very confusing too, because you get a snack that says, you know, good source of vitamin C or hundred percent natural, but then turn them over. And when you look, you know, sugar is the first ingredient. So I really encourage and want to empower you to make sure you're looking at nutrition facts labels when you're thinking you're buying something that's seemingly healthy. And don't beat yourself up if after this you look in your pantry and there are quite a few things that you thought were healthy that aren't because we've all done it. We've all been there. <laughs> yes, we have. All right. Number three myth that we hear a lot and see a lot is people like severely restricting their calorie intake or eating significantly less than they need to. And we have something called a basal metabolic rate. So that is how many calories you need to maintain where you're at daily living, how many calories you burn if you were to lay down all day. Yep. What you need to survive basically. So we have to at very minimum eat that amount. And sometimes when people are trying to lose weight or, you know, get quick results, they might severely restrict their, their diet. And what happens is we tend to over consume later in the day. I was working with a client recently and he was like, we had people over, we were going to have this cookout. And then the cookout, you know, went a little bit later and we ate breakfast, but then I didn't eat. And it was like four o'clock and I was starving. And then I just started over consuming. And then I felt pretty like, I didn't feel great after. And I was like, okay, well, I get it. A lot of times things happen and, uh, you know, we can't always plan, but could we next time have some convenient options available to grab a snack if things are, are getting pushed back later to set yourself up for success? Yeah, you know, that's so common when we we restrict, we don't eat enough during the day and to eat way too much at the end of the day. And it's not your fault. Your body is screaming out for nutrients. You know, they, your body knows it needs to eat. But the best practice is to eat sufficient calories and eat frequently throughout the day. But another side of this is when we restrict for long periods of time, you know, we under eat for so long and your body doesn't get enough energy that it needs. Initially, we'll use our fat stores for energy. And that's that's how most people begin to lose weight. But over time, your body actually adjusts to this calorie deficit and your metabolism will slow down because it's not burning energy as efficiently. And then your weight loss stops because your metabolism is slowed and it becomes really hard to maintain your weight eating anything more than a set number of calories that your body's adjusted to. So it becomes very, very difficult to lose weight despite hard efforts and eating clean and exercising regularly. So I think the take home message for this is you, you want to be sure that you're eating enough to support your activities and your basal metabolic rate. And you want to make sure that you are making time to eat throughout the day. You know, people who under eat, take a look at why, why are we under eating? I think a lot of time it's lack of time or schedule, we get busy or we don't have anything prepped. Um, but what could we actually do to help set ourselves up for success? And sometimes, you know, especially some people are stressed and they end up not eating enough yeah. when, when they're stressed. Could you get yourself into a routine? Could you set yourself an alarm so that you're reminded, hey, it's time to eat. I have to eat something. Can you have meals and snacks easily ready to go so that you don't have to waste too much time prepping everything from scratch? At the end of the day, it really comes down to having a plan. Absolutely. You need to have a plan. If, if you want to see success in reaching your goals, you have to plan out how it's going to happen. Absolutely. And talking that through with the coaches is oftentimes really, really helpful. So today we went through some common myths. Yes. We talked about, you know, why you need a balance, why 
fat's not bad. You need some carbohydrates. You don't need to completely avoid these things. Protein, we didn't talk about. Protein doesn't have a bad rap. So you, protein's the building blocks of muscle. We need some of that as well. Um, healthy claims and labels, which I think is such a common myth. And people are tricked by that all the time. We've yeah. all been tricked. And the last one is just eating significantly under the amount that we should be eating. And we want to make sure that we're eating consistently. We're eating enough to optimize our me metabolic rate and fuel our bodies so that we can perform our best in the gym or just with mood and, and concentration, everything to, to help live our best life. So we've busted these three myths today. Now you know moving forward the fact from fiction. So much information in this episode about nutrition myths. Ashley and I could go on for months talking about all the crazy things that we've heard over the years. But in reality, you need something that's realistic for you. You don't need to cut out food groups completely. You don't need to starve yourself. You don't need to go on a super restrictive diet to see the results they're looking to achieve. In fact, that's going to leave you moody, tired, and not probably the friendliest person to be around. Instead, we need to focus on what foods we can add in, what we can eat so much more of, those non-starchy vegetables, a variety of different colors to provide different vitamins and minerals and fiber. We want to have those lean meats, those healthy sources of fat. We want to have our plate that is colorful and full of nutritious foods. We want to make sure that we're not just following a super restrictive diet because that is going to slow down our metabolic rate. There's a lot of money spent on the diet industry and it's easy to get tricked. So if you're thinking, hey, I've been tricked or I have followed all these different diets and nothing's worked for me. Have you invested in your health and invested in a nutrition coach or registered dietitian? Have you actually worked with a coach to help you meet you where you're at and keep you accountable? I think one of the biggest struggles that people have when they're trying to see really good results is, is inconsistency. They don't set themselves up with a plan that's realistic for them, and they don't have the support system that they need to see those amazing results. Achieving health and wellness is not just by what you eat. It's also creating a active routine, exercising, sleep, stress management. There's so many different factors that go into helping you become the best and healthiest version of yourself. If you're thinking, man, I need someone to help me. I need a coach. We would love to help you. Click the link in the show notes and you can apply for nutrition coaching at Healthy Steps Nutrition HQ or go to hireanutritioncoach.com and find a Healthy Steps Nutrition Coach near you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to click the link in the show notes. There's always additional support, resources, links to other podcast episodes that are related to the topic that we discuss. So click the link in the show notes, get some additional support. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and we'll see you back here soon. Have a great week.